connection that he started to make with light. So, for those who haven't plugged your ears, he didn't want to have to write his name in the death note, but he knew it was coming. Um, but also the silly bits. I didn't know those are part of the of the of the series at all. When how crazy he'd get and and turn himself into a pretzel and curl up in a ball and and just have those cravings and those kind of craziness for apples. I didn't think that was a part, but it was a very fun uh, bit that the writers put in to just give a, a sort of a lighter look at uh, who this death god was. Um, very fun. Such a, a, a fun journey to go on with that character. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being here again. I just, your guys' energy together is just a lot of fun. You guys are, again, one of my favorite animes. You guys helped me get into anime, so I appreciate you guys. Because at the time, I wasn't playing around with subs. I was all about the dubs. And so that was that was my entry into this. So thank you guys for being here. Um, I think, you know, we are on somewhat of a time schedule, so I want to give the next, like, 15 minutes to you guys. You guys are here to see them. You're obviously here not here to see me. Um, so I want to open this up to you guys. Who has a question? If you have a question, come up here and grab the mic. Nice to see you all. First, I got three questions for one each of you. That's all right. One, right? Okay. First question for Brad. You got those potato chips from those. Have you ever got any potato chip sponsorships before? For the <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to repeat that question. Brad, have you ever got any potato chip sponsorship? Not yet. I would be happy to endorse a fine potato chip project. But... I, um, I've also received so many free potato chips as a result of playing light on this show. So I thank you. I thank, I thank the fan community and their appreciation and love of potato chips um, as, as I also love potato chips. So thank you, thank you. And I would love to be sponsored by any one of the fine brands that make the fine potato chips. That is all. And for Brian, um, what's the most difficult character you had to put voice before? The most difficult character I've voiced before. Um, it's good. That's a great question. The, the toughest ones do tend to be when there's a lot of screaming and fighting involved. It's very difficult on the voice. But I probably say the characters that make me the most nervous are the most established characters. So I was probably the two in the past I was most nervous about maybe ten years ago or so. I played Wolverine in about five different animated features. One of my favorite characters growing up, so, but he's been voiced by a lot of great actors in the past, so to pull that off, you know you'll, there'll be some judgment and you want to do it well, so that was very difficult. And then recently, I've, I've played Eggman in Sonic Prime, which is on Netflix right now, and that's been done by some amazing actors in the past as well, a huge franchise, and you know, been done by some of the best. You, it really makes me that much more nervous to take on a role um, that's uh, as important to the to the franchise as him. So ones that I'm scared to, to get wrong are probably characters like that. But once I fall into it and they've chosen me for the role, it becomes much easier. On the voice, though, screaming and fighting Vegeta really difficult when he's fighting. Not so bad when he's not fighting, but anybody who's fighting a lot is, is tough work. Alessandro, um, have you got any candy sponsorships that you voiced out? <laughs> oh, if only, right? Yeah. Uh, I've only had one person bring me a cake uh, to a convention before. It was delicious, thank you. Um, but I am open-minded to, yeah, I don't know, uh, Betty Crocker? I don't know what to... <laughs> let's hook this up, I'm down. So we're just throwing it out there. If you guys have any sweets... Um, I can't believe no one asked me in the state of Apples, Washington, about Apple sponsorships for you. His face should be on the side of every box sold in the state. Come That's on. it, guys. Let's get out no of here. No one wants more. <laughs> All right. is oftentimes like dubbed over like you know things of L like in the anime and everything and it's beautiful and I literally listen to it all the time and you have a beautiful voice it's haunting and enchanting and then uh, for my actual question so I just did a recently a rewatch of Death Note and you know the whole time I was definitely not rooting for Light to win but in that final episode <laughs> In the final episode, I'm an L girly, in the final episode, um, just 
the ending and the finality of it, having been through this whole journey through Light's perspective mainly, I was still bawling like a baby. Um, so I just, my question was, what were your emotions, not necessarily as the voice actor of Light, but as also someone who saw the story and everything about his ending and about what, what did, how did that settle with you? Ooh, it still hasn't settled to this day. <laughs> There's only 36 episodes, right? There's no 37th episode, what are you guys talking about? Um, no, I mean, I'm conflicted like a lot of people. What's really cool about this show, like there's a lot of things that are cool about this show, but we recorded this back in, what, 2007, 2008, and we're still talking about this series the same way today as we were back then when it first came out, having the same discussions, the same debates, and it's really interesting playing a character that people love to hate or hate to love. And I have the same relationship with that character. There's certain things that I wish happened differently for life, but it would be a completely different story if it worked that way. You have to have certain things happen in a story like this to really intensify it and make it important. Certain characters have to go. If they make it right to the end, what's the value in that? With the exception of one character, maybe. I could have done without some of the things that happened to life. Um, but yeah, I'm conflicted like a lot of people. You know, episode one, you look at Light's ideals and you can get behind them. And then when he starts to make decisions that aren't necessarily in the interest of the greater good, but him protecting his secrecy, suddenly things go sideways pretty, pretty quickly. And, you know, the old adage is, absolute power corrupts absolutely, and that's definitely what happened to Light. So it had to go that way. Oh, I hate hearing myself say that. It had to go that way. It didn't have to go that way. No, it had to. And I'm okay with it. Almost. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Dude, I'm so stoked to even hear you guys' voices today. You know how long it's been since I've heard, you know, Death Note. And uh, I grew up with all these things when the first thing But um, my question to you, uh, all three of you, was there any sort of tendencies that you developed or kind of stuck with as you were voicing this show, like maybe you took up tennis or you guys started eating different foods, but what would it be? Apples have always been my favorite fruit, and it never changed with the series. It's it's gonna be like that forever. But yeah, I don't know if there's any uh, death god tendencies I've stuck with, but there's a lot of there's a lot of syrup. I find this very very comfortable. Yeah, and that, I, I did before the show even. Now. I mean, I found I tried to start bribing people to do things with apples. Didn't work in the real world as it did for Shitty Gabby. I'm like, eh, 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 do my laundry, wash my car, it's an apple. People thought I was crazy. <laughs> like, oh yeah, this is real life. <laughs> So, I actually watched the dub of Death Note, but what really got me into anime and the dubs was the dub on, on Toonami of Gundam Wing. So, Zach's catch awesome. Okay, I have some silly questions. First of all, um, uh, Brett Drummond, um, is there any character you might remember that you voiced that, um, since you have like two um, favorite, like, well known characters with spiky hair, is there a character that you voiced that doesn't have spiky hair that you think could really pull off really well? Any character I voice that doesn't have spiky hair that I think I could pull off really well. I don't know. Um, sure would have been like, didn't like to have done a Simpsons character, but uh, those, those jobs are taken, and yeah, Homer does not have spiky hair. It is quite funny, we were noticing this today, looking on my poster, how with the similar hairline that Ryuk has to Vegeta. So I said, what is going on here? And then we looked at Wolverine. Wait a minute, there's got, there was all these connections were coming together. But as you said, in Gundam Wing, very, very different. Zex were keys, long, flowing, like hair, beautiful yeah. hair, and Alan Shazar, very different as well. So I can't think of a character that I would probably find I could pull off that way, but I don't know about you, Brad. Well, I did play a character on a show called Hamtaro. Uh. Uh, but now Maxwell. that I say that, I'm thinking about Maxwell, and like he had the, you know, Dragon Ball equivalent of ears. I guess, because 
I remember working on that show, and sometimes you'd look and there was like 25 hamsters on screen, and you had to figure out which yours was. And mine was always easy to, to pick out, because he had the largest head and the biggest ears. So, you know, no spiky hair, but now that I'm saying that, I'm like, he had ridiculous ears, though, so maybe there is a trend with the characters that I play. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to reinvest in my entire life. Okay, yeah. so I actually have a question for Brad. Um, since you brought it up, um, when we were the script, when you referenced stuff for the laugh for light, did you not look at the laugh you did for catch room as a reference? I mean, you're absolutely right, you called me out. So, you know, it's not like I suddenly became crazy and, you know, getting tended to be, be cast as crazy characters with Death Note. It started much earlier. So Catra, the pacifist in Gundam Wing, the guy that doesn't want to fight, for those of you who don't know anything about Gundam, gets in this one particular Gundam and cannot handle its power and goes a little bit psycho. And that was my first kind of inkling of maniacal laughter. And I think back then it was a little bit more like, <laughs> and then it turned into, <laughs> like it kind of evolved as, as I played crazy character after crazy character after crazy character, then hamster, then crazy character. Okay, and one thing. Um, since I got to ask the Japanese voice actor for, of, of L for this, um, what's your favorite sweet, if you have one? Favorite sweet? Yes. Uh, sticky toffee pudding with vanilla ice cream. Oh, okay. Just and just for the record, um, the Japanese boy said he prefers booze. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful to see you all again, uh, Cordy. Back again. I've seen you all many times this weekend. Um, like everybody else here, this is such an important anime to me and a comfort show for me. And um, the three of you, plus the wonderful Shannon who plays me, so Mone, uh, comprise sort of the main four cast members. But something that always comes up for me when I rewatch the show is from top to bottom, everybody involved with this project. I mean, you know, obviously there's great source material and writing, but there's so many great um, side characters as well. So I would love to know, for example, I'm a big Matsuda fan. Um, one of my favorite scenes in the whole show is, hey, buddy. Uh, and so I would love to know from each of you um, if you had a favorite uh, character outside of the main four. Wow, well I'm going to Disneyland with Matsuda in a few weeks, Mr. Vincent Tong. He's a, he's a good friend of mine, uh, we're going to San Diego Comic Con and squeezing in a little Disneyland visit. We love it. Vincent would come around one of these with us. Um, great character. I, I um, as a dad, myself, of, of older um, children, my range from like 28 to 22, three kids that I have. Um, I think in, when I watch the series, I do relate quite often to Mike's father. And that was one of the initial characters I read for. Um, I think if I probably went back and I wasn't cast as Ryu, I would quite enjoy that role um, for myself. And I think we'll have a great time actually doing it um, in the future. But it's great probably. I'm Team Matsuda all the way. I think. If I hadn't voiced L, I would have loved to have voiced Matsuda, just as a total contrast. I also really love um, Watari, like the, the late great French Tickner, uh, um, sort of legendary voice actor up in Vancouver, and he, um, that sort of Alfred to the Batman kind of dynamic that they have um, resonated for me. Personally, I think Matsuda is an idiot. <laughs> no, I, I love that character too, and I do recall uh, because we provided the English voice tracks for the Japanese live-action movies. There was a, a group of us that, from the main cast, that went to go see the limited theatrical release, and I do remember one scene in one of those movies where it was kind of intense and kind of intense, and then Vincent, as Matsuda, says something stupid, which is what, and the whole theater just lost their mind, and I remember thinking, that's a really funny character to play, like that's just, and it was the perfect little tension, you know, breaker and all that kind of stuff. But I'm also rather partial to the Shinigami, um, and there's one Shinigami that you don't see very much in the show, but Jealous was a character that I just thought was so sweet and so cute and creepy at the same time, so I thought, like, this is a really cool character, I wish I could see more of. Amazing, thank you all so much. Um, so I talked to you, Brad, about uh, wanting to be a voice actor later, and I was just like, I, I kind of curious about uh, what was your first audition like, um, in general? 
first professional audition or any kind of audition, I guess, do you mean? Well, let's go with this, uh, uh, just professional. Yeah, so, um, well, I don't know if I can really remember my first professional audition. I think it was a theatrical production. Um, uh, but my first voice audition was for a series uh, a few years later when I started doing voice, a series called Reboot. I don't know if anyone knows that CGI series. Um, they were recasting, I believe. It was sort of second season, The Voice of Bob. I'm not sure if he had moved to, to do more film and TV in LA or something. But they were recasting that, that role. It ended up going to Ian Corlett, another phenomenal actor. Um, but I loved the process. I was so excited by it. I didn't really know what I was doing when I walked up to the microphone. But the very next audition I went out for, for a G.I. Joe series um, called G.I. Joe Extreme, I booked one of the series regulars on it and got to work with Sue Blue, who directed all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and was just an incredible director. And that just spurred me on to do so much more because the cast in the room were all these great actors like Gary Chalk and, and Matt Hill and uh, and Michael Dobson. All these guys were just doing incredible work and I was just sucking it all in. So, But the audition process is, I still remember, but even now when I go into an audition, and I think I probably should stop doing it if I'm not nervous, but I'm nervous. We just started doing some in-person callbacks. It used to be mostly just stuff at home uh, because of COVID, but we just recently, after three years, are going back into the room for some auditions and callbacks and my heart was racing a little bit and I was like, wow, this is, I remember this feeling, this is pretty good. And I always remember to try and use, nervous energy to me, I've always told people, nervous energy is just energy. And it's good to have that when you're walking into audition, use it. So if, if the character has fear, excitement, whatever, your blood's pumping, you have an opportunity to use it and I've, I've always used it to my advantage. So. Thank you. Keith Silverstein actually said that too. Um, I I started doing voice work when I was a teenager. I started when I was about 12. Um, I auditioned uh, for uh, a Saturday morning cartoon that was recording up in Vancouver called Captain N, the Game Master, Captain Nintendo. It was like the first generation console. And it was one of the first cartoons that recorded in Vancouver, I think, ever. And I just happened to have like my voice was just breaking, so I, I sounded a lot like this, and already. Um, so I just kind of did my normal voice, and I put like a Brooklyn accent on, not a very good one, I don't think, either. But somehow, by a stroke of luck, that was the voice they were looking for, for this character of Kid Icarus, Kid Icarus, or Pit. Um, so I had the same experience that Brian did when I was just a little younger, of being in a room with all these grown-ups, uh, goofing off and having to behave around me, the kid, in the show. They didn't behave. Um, but I learned a lot, obviously, being in a room like that and soaked it all in. And then I worked on another show called Camp Candy with John Candy um, that also recorded in Vancouver. And um, I started from there. So, yeah, early beginnings, that was my first audition, as I remember. It was like, uh, I was just a kid. I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah, my experience was similar. I was a teenager when I got started, so my first audition for a cartoon was a show called My Little Pony Tales, and I got it. So that was a really cool experience because I was working with a cast that was mostly kids. Um, so we did that series, and then I, I worked on something called The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, um, but I was the guy that like every time they went to commercial and came back, I would say, back at you with Sonic the Hedgehog, or whatever. So I just recorded that on my own. But based on what I did for that, I got cast in one episode of a show called Double Dragon. And so I recorded that, and that's when my mind was blowing. Because I was the one kid in that, in that episode, surrounded by grown-ups who were professional voice actors. And that's when it really clicked, oh, this is a serious thing. And these guys are crazy and over the top, but amazing and focused and all these things at once. They're having fun, but they're being super professional. And I really admired the incredible people that were in that room with me. And I started to take it a lot more seriously and realize that it's a, it's a real joy to work on a project like that. You probably made a lot of money too, because the swear jar is full in those sessions. When you're working with kids, oh, money in a swear jar. Thank you. We only have about like 10 more minutes, so we'll do rapid fire questions and answers to try to get through the whole line. Go for it. All right, I'll make it short. Uh, thank you guys for being here, uh, first of all. Um, Death Note is probably one of the most well-written um, 
complex storylines in anime history. And even though there was a Netflix movie made, you know, you don't mention it that, that often, um, William Defoe did get to voice you. So I don't know, um, coming from you being the other, well, the first voice actor of you in, in English, um, did you have any sort of contact with him or how did you like how he uh, did his impression of it? Yeah, well, Willem called me, uh, but no, he didn't. <laughs> not at all, no. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the voice actors, the producers, I mean, the actors, the producers, the directors even watched the series, to be honest. <laughs> but um, when I heard Willem was going to get the role, I thought, great. Right away I knew he's got such a unique voice, unique look. I thought, great casting, but after seeing the movie, uh, I feel like uh, most of them did not watch the series and have the vibe of it at all. But no, they didn't contact any of us at all. They just were, they clearly did their own thing with uh, the movie. That's <laughs> okay, average American fans can uh, relate. All right, thank you. Next question. Um, hi, Death Note is probably one of my favorite animes. And, um, Am I closer to your mouth a little bit? My question for you. Would we be able to say some of our favorite lines? Okay, sure, let's see. <laughs> Humans are so interesting. <laughs> and of course, apples are, what's the word? Juicy! <laughs> potato chip and eat it! Actually, I found that you don't gain weight as long as you burn calories by using your brain. so much. We're humbled to, to hear that from you. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. I have a question that I love asking all creatives. If you had not gotten into voice acting, if you hadn't fallen into this, what would you be doing today for a career? Well, we had fallen into acting in general. Voice acting is a part of the acting we do, so if I didn't get cast in any voice acting, I'm sure I would still be trying to do other acting. But if someone said, Brian, all of your acting sucks. Every kind of it, stay out of it. Um, I am. I built uh, from ground up a home of my own and done huge renovations on some other homes of my own. Uh, so I think I would probably have uh, moved towards architecture. I quite like um, design, building, structure. One of my favorite places. Like if I have a have to go pick something up from Home Depot on the weekend, I could walk the aisles at Home Depot for hours, and I'm in. I'm in heaven. Smell of cedar, knowing I get to, a project is on the way. I love it. So uh, it would probably be something to do with building. I would probably be in a boy band with Brad. I actually do have a regular full-time job as, as, as well as the voice acting. I do graphic design and production work for a sporting goods company. Um, so I'd be probably doing something in the art world because I'm an art guy. I've drawn my whole life. Um, the design work that I'm doing now is, is more production heavy and like sports uniforms and, and stuff like that. But it would probably be something within the artistic realm some, somehow. Or music, I love music. I play drums and guitar, so maybe I'd be in one of, in one of my favorite bands with some of my favorite people. Thank you. Oh, well. Well, um, so my question is kind of a, a, a what if situation. Um, so things didn't work out like they did in Death Note, and like, if Elle was still alive, how would you think Light and Elle's relationship would be? Like, would Elle, or, would Elle hire Light? Would they become detective rivals? Would they just become tennis rivals? Like, how would you think they would develop? Uh, it would sort of be like a Bert and Ernie kind of situation. Separate beds, but the same bedroom. Um, 
lots of salty and sweet. A lot of junk food in that kitchen that they share. Um, a lot of chess playing, I imagine. Off the top of my head, that would be kind of the... Yeah, dual controllers. It, that's the sitcom version, I think. I still kind of like the idea of boy band. Why not, right? And at the very least, you know, uh, recreational activity on the weekends, maybe they'd play, like, doubles tennis and take on the world. That'd be fun to say. Fabulous question, thank you. For everyone, thank before you. we wrap up our last question or two here, um, if you have a chance, before we take off, we'll probably be another 20 minutes up in the artist area for to say hellos or autographs or any of that before you leave, if anyone wants to see us before we head back to Vancouver tonight. But this has been amazing. Thank you so much, and fire away. Let me get another question here. All right, I got two questions, but uh, I'll make the first one quick. You touched on it a little bit, but what do you guys think of the Netflix movie? Oh, we did downer for the last question. Jeez, bringing up the I, Netflix movie. I want, to, I want to hear you guys say your opinion about it just straight up. You know, uh, uh, honestly, I, 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 yeah, I'll speak for the group. We, um, I love performers. I'm never going to to uh, rag on any performer because great actors in that film. I, actually, all the leads, like Al Misa, uh, Willem Dafoe, all fabulous performers, and even the supporting actors in it are great actors. I've seen them in many other things. My personal thought was I feel just like the production and, uh, and directing team didn't necessarily understand the source material that well and said, we want to do our own thing with this title. And here's the basis of the story. So it just kind of flew in a direction that I wasn't a big fan of. But believe it or not, people who have never seen the, the series before, I've heard some people uh, who have seen it and, and liked it who never saw the series. So, you know, that can happen as well. I figured you couldn't really say like anything bad about it, but I figured you felt the same as everyone else. But I only made it through 20 minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I watched the whole thing sadly, but um, for my second question, I was going to ask, do you think there would ever be kind of like a spin-off type deal where like someone else finds the notebook? And I mean, like, I know it was released a while ago, the original Death Note, so. Um, I think this is a great way to end, actually. Um, I think the resurgence of interest in Death Note has been so apparent to us in the last, even in the last couple of years since the pandemic. There are, I think a whole new generation of people have watched it. I think there's never been more interest in the show. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you know there's like potentially a new series with the Duffer Brothers who made um, Stranger Things have bought the rights to it. So they may put out a series of it, a new version. Hopefully they get it right. I think there's tons of room for there to be more Death Note and Death Note Universe kind of prequel, Young L kind of stuff, or or Light as a Shinigami, you know, stuff. You can, you can uh, it's, the possibilities are endless, and, and who knows, it may take uh, one of you to write it, one of you who are passionate about Death Note to write the next chapter in the story, and we hope you do, and we're available to voice it if you do. Thank you so much for being here. Watch the big summer Give it up for the Death Note!